this is, this is, this is. Hey, hey, what's up, man? Uh, great to have you back, Joel. Joel Bader. If you're in Germany, it's pronounced Badar. What is it? Bader. Bader. Whoa, that was good. <laughs> so I, I saw that Germany had some insane flooding like last year. Are you guys doing okay out in Switzerland? Yeah. I mean, it's it's not that far, but it's definitely far. You know, it's yeah. like it's not around the corner. But uh, <laughs> I mean, in the city in Basel, I mean, you've been to Basel. Yeah. And, uh, Basel is, is pretty safe, actually. We only have one big river, and this one's pretty pretty good built so that like, it can happen anything so yeah have good. you let me ask you a question about basel basel switzerland for those wondering i've heard, i've been hearing about this art basel art basel show yeah. but it's in like it's in the states so that has nothing to do with the city of basel or does it did it start there it, it has yeah yeah i mean art art basel is it's kind of an art exhibition mm -hmm. and they do like i guess it's the art miami or yeah. something yeah, so they have like they spread all over the world with that. It's like it's actually pretty famous because like I guess like years ago there was like Brad Pitt and Ryan Gosling and all these uh, famous people. They come here and actually buy. I think Lars Ulrich uh, was once here too, like buying uh, <laughs> just insane overpriced art. <laughs> That's the way to go. Yeah. Now, I now... was never there. I was never ever there. I mean, I worked there once. Uh, building up the, all the, the technician stuff, but never was there as a, as a guest. Wow. Yeah, it seems like uh, just as as I see things, I'm like, oh, yeah, Art Basel. I wonder if that's from your town. It is. It is. It's so, so cool that you, that, you, that, you, that you got, like, the German thing with the floods. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, of course, it's a big thing, but, I mean, I would never guess that you, like, in Seattle or, or in Texas, like, thinking about that, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, we get little snippets of news and, and who knows what's really going on, right? Like, so so I think it's important to, like, ask your friends. Ask your friends yeah. what's, what's happening over there. It's flooding here. I mean, it's it's flooding in my basement here. It's <laughs> It's been – it was snowing uh, all last week. It, it was snowing a few nights ago, to, to be honest. Um, but the snow's finally, you know, all melting and when the snow melts, and it's been there for a week or more, it starts getting into the into the basements. You know, we yep. have. Do you have basements in in Switzerland? We actually do, and we actually got bunker basements a lot of like all the buildings built in, with I would say like 60s, 70s, and 80s or something, even to, into the 90s. We still got bunkers. I mean, you have never been to our rehearsal room when we were here, but we actually have a rehearsal room in a in an old bunker which would be there if like switzerland would have been attacked by whoever yeah uh, that would be have that would have been like the communication bunker in in basel to like provide communication for uh for for switzerland so that's that's where we rehearse <laughs> oh that's insane is it called like fallout rehearsals or something yeah. <laughs> no the, the funny thing is like we, we had this deal we, i had to get rid of all the stuff which was it's still in the bunker when when we got it because it was full with like bunk beds and 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 just stuff you need if if you're stuck in a bunker for you don't know how long yeah so there was like even eating like 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 these little meals packed up uh it's like i don't know how you say like M dry dry meals we call them like mres meals ready to eat yeah mre yeah, yeah. and then there was a big desk I still get a photo somewhere uh, of a, a communication at desk from the, I would say, 60s. So mm -hmm. you had to, like, connect by plugging, like, in the movies. Like, yeah. The, yeah so, like the operator. Oh, let me yeah. connect you. Yeah. That's that's basically like a studio patch bay for those that that's, don't know. Yeah, right? And we sold it to to a guy who, who was interested in that, and he, he kind of run runs it as a as that, as a, as a studio equipment part, yeah. That would be that would be cool to have like an actual telephone operating, I don't know, with like a panel of of patch bays, insane. So like for, I don't know, a lot of people probably don't know what a patch bay is for for studio life, but when we record, you have like um, a bunch of equipment. You know, your microphones go into preamps and stuff, and and all these racks of gear, and then that usually goes to 
these pre these 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 patch bays, which is like, I, I guess think of like a bunch of little cables plugged in. You know, everybody remembers the the operating, yeah. You know, look or whatever. You know, those photos from from the early days, but maybe not everybody, but I do. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's what a patch bay is, is is to get, you know, and then you can patch in your preamp to a compressor and then that goes into your console. The console is the mixing board. So yeah, that that's, I've had, oh my God, I mean, so many issues with our patch bays lately. Just like, Everybody. you jiggle, oh, there's the sound again. <laughs> <laughs> That's so that's that's cool. And, and you mentioned you have like a patch bay, which was a, a patch bay for for a telecommunication before, and, and somehow you just patch your compressor or something, and you got like guy from China on 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 your, on your desk or something. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny because we we actually have you know if you have grounding issues, you can pick up radio stations on your mixing board a lot of times. And our old mixing board, we had a Neotech Elite. Uh, the first, that was the first you recorded on that I think and then um, that we would get Mexican radio stations and I'm like how are we getting Mexican radio stations we're nowhere near Mexico <laughs> That's so cool. but it's never it's, like, it's never a regular like top 40 station it's always some weird <laughs> strange music not that Mexican music is strange but it just is out of place I know what you mean here and I bet you, you I, I just want to tell you one little story which which is still in my mind it was so funny but it wasn't to you because we were in Russia together and I remember um my my pickup like my my guitar pickup um received a radio station on on the amplifier yeah and and, and you tried to sound check and it was really really loud because he already mic'd the amp so you were like Joel turn your turn your phone off and I said dude <laughs> It's my guitar, <laughs> and you were kind of because I mean I wasn't doing a joke at all. I just I just told you the truth, and and, and you just thought I'm I'm making a joke, and you were like, "Come on, let, let's get this sound checked on, like turn it off," and I'm like <laughs> stepping forward, like more serious. I'm like, "Dude, it's my guitar. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Nothing I can do." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are crazy shows. So we did, you know, for those that don't know, Joel, Joel, and Silvio, and. Tristan and and I mean, the list goes on. But uh, uh, <laughs> the list goes on. <laughs> but uh, we uh, we did a lot of shows together as the MX Peaks All Stars, and then it actually it started out as you brought me over for some solo tours. I did a solo tour, and we went all over Europe, had amazing times. Russia, those were some of the craziest craziest uh, experiences. I mean, you you tell a story about the sound check, but it was, I mean, you know, it, I guess it was just, it was just different, right? It's just, it's just a little different. It's like, okay, we're literally in a fallout shelter doing a show, like that kind of stuff. You're talking about your, 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 uh, what is it? Your rehearsal space. Yeah. 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 But, uh, One, yeah, too true. <laughs> but Russia was fun. The first time we went there, it was, it was, uh, well, I went there with Tommy Rat. I went there with, you know, all my guys, Tom and Yuri. And we had some crazy things happen. Like we were on stage, packed show. Our our stage hand, our stage hand. It's funny, <laughs> funny that I use that term. <laughs> our roadie, uh, James Barrett, the Leprechauno. Do you remember a little bit about him? I, I met him. Yeah. So he was standing behind me, and all of a sudden, he's just on the floor. And these guys in suits are like like tending to him, looking at him, trying to wake him up. And we're like literally playing a song and we stop the song and we're like, what, what happened? And then we see remnants of glass and we realize one of the giant light bulbs from the stage lighting fell out of the rig above him and just boom, hit him on the head. <laughs> he got knocked out. I am I'm laughing now. It's kind of funny now, yeah. but at the time it was pretty scary. It was like, mm -hmm. what? And that was our first show ever in Russia. So that yeah. happened. So it was like, okay, this is a different kind of place. We got to pay attention. And, and uh, sometimes it's not the people, it's the, the light bulbs coming at you. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I, I remember that one time outside of Moscow where we played and um, there's this whole, uh, I mean, just because you told that story, mm -hmm. what can happen? Like the the whole electricity was 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 really bad, 
and 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 I remember we we, we just stopped rehearsing or, or sound checking because we were like, no way we can plug more electricity into these like bulks. It's like everything can explode or you should can, can get an electric shock. I mean, there's so many videos on YouTube from bands who played Russia mm -hmm. and got like heavy electric shocks on stage. And so absolutely, what was that band? It was like Ch not Cheshire Cat or something. No, it was, it was Comeback Kid. Oh, was it Comeback Kid? Yeah, it was the singer from Call My Kid where he like got like this, this like, this shock, like he was, yeah, just stiff. Just. <laughs> it was like a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's funny because nothing serious happened. Right. But, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, on on that show in, I, I think it was called Ishtar, mm -hmm. I was really really concerned playing that show or going too close to the microphone because like. You just never know. I mean, it's just like a house in the middle of nowhere, and like the electricity guy just like took cables out of of the floor and out of the walls, and it was like open cables. And you're like, I'm not sure, but in Switzerland or in the U.S., that's like a bad sign, you know? That's a it's bad like... sign. That's a bad look. I remember <laughs> yeah. that place. I remember that place because it had, it was like a where, uh, it was like a theater, and all, most of the crowd was just there because there was no, nothing ever happens you know like so they were there to see the punk show but was that the same place that downstairs there was like a a, a makeshift recording studio some sort but it was like the walls were like beer beer cardboard boxes you know like things like that you know yeah, yeah that was a that place was sketchy yeah and that it's funny to say that that place was sketchy because we played that strip club in a different town where we had the state, I mean, there was no strippers on stage when we played or anything, but we're like way up high <laughs> playing on the bar. We like played on like the stage. It was so weird yeah. anyway, but I remember having, we had steak for dinner and it was just, the, and pizza and it was the worst. It no, was not even real food. First. We had steak first and then we were like, can we just have something else? Because like the steak actually had this smell as if you go into a cellar, like in your basement in the house and it's a little bit wet. You have yeah, to like this. it smelled like that, and, and she's like, "Yeah, you can have pizza." And I was like, "Oh, that's that's cool. We we'll take the pizza," and it was just like a, a bowl of like of dough, and then it was, it was just oil on it. All over spilled, and it smelled so bad. It was like <laughs> when when we drove to when we drove back to the hotel, it was just like you just actually told me the word embassy that day. Oh I yes, have... <laughs> <laughs> tell everybody what the embassy is. <laughs> The embassy was like we were driving back, we were driving back, and we played the show and, and been in that venue for so long and haven't eaten anything. Uh, that was actually also the part at uh, the place where he told us that water costs the band like a dollar per whatever per glass, but the whiskey is, uh, but the vodka is free. Vodka that is free. Was <laughs> so because we, instead of stage water, it was just like liter bottles of, of vodka all over the, 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 the stage. And um, we drove back and we were really hungry. And then we saw a McDonald's on, on the side, on, on the sideway, um, on, on the exit, on, on the highway. And you were like, oh, thanks God, the embassy. <laughs> the embassy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was like, and then I was looking for like, like an embassy. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, is there a, a US flag somewhere or whatever? And I was like, I, I guess that's a McDonald's. And like, yes, correct. That's the embassy. <laughs> yes, the embassy. I love it. I it's mean, still, it's still in our in our thing. Like Silvio, every time he sees a McDonald's on tour, it's not a McDonald's anymore. It's the embassy. It's the embassy. You know, it's funny because McDonald's in different countries it means something different. Like in in Russia, it's very American. It's seen as that's the American chain. And yeah. it's overpriced. It's expensive. You only go there when you're like kind of going to spend some money, which is super weird, right? Like it's kind of the opposite in Switzerland. You go to, to McDonald's when you're you have no money. And you're like, I, I, all I can afford is a Big Mac or something, right? And it's still expensive. That's still expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had this. I had this this guy. Um, um, Guru, I don't know if you know the, the rapper Guru, um, he had like a, a famous um, record, Guru's Jazz Matas, it was a, a really cool rapper, and he cool. was at Basel, and I did a show for him, and he wanted to go to McDonald's, and I was like, okay, let's go there, so he, he, he like, he had his gold chain and everything ready, and he had like his credit card, and he was like, yeah, I'm gonna spend some McDonald's for everybody, 
so like his his crew and even me were like yeah yeah like we take this menu and give me some burgers and nuggets so it was four or five people and at the end the cashier said i'll try to take it in dollars she said something around that's like 150 dollars <laughs> oh you know and he he was like kind of first time in switzerland at mcdonald's he was like so what's on the bill for 150 dollars it's like <laughs> something extra I, I i didn't know i ordered and she was like no no you got like the two big mac meals and like whatever some chicken nuggets and fries that's 150 dollars <laughs> so he realized oh shit yeah that's the price it's insane it's like a, a a big mac menu in fucking switzerland costs you about 17 swiss francs 17 dollars and you guys still have swiss francs yeah and yeah. you don't you don't use euros in switzerland no we're, we're i mean even though we were in the middle of Europe, <laughs> <laughs> like literally in the middle, we just, we just, I guess that's it's probably the best, best thing you've done as well. Not the best thing you've done in Switzerland, but like it's, it's been, was that a good decision? I mean, it seems honestly, I don't, I don't know. I haven't been keeping up I mean, on economics over there. So. <laughs> it would be way easier for my business with like uh, online shops and fees and whatever. It would be way easier to be part of the Euro and, and because like in Switzerland, the thing is like so many big companies still have their own way and they have like, they're like the, 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 the like the post office, for example, there's mm -hmm. just one, you know, there's no other options in Switzerland. It's like you either go there or no, or nobody sends your packages out. Wow. Yeah. That's you know, I mean, you can, you can, you can use DHL or UPS or whatever, but it's so much ex more expensive. It's, it's not as a, it's not a regular post office, you know? Right, right, right. Well, I think and, that's the same with us. I mean, in the U S we have the U S post office, which is usually less money than, than everything else. And then we have DHL, we have net, uh, we have U UPS and, and FedEx and probably a few others that I don't know about, but same thing, you know, it's, uh, it, it is weird what's going on with our, our post office because, uh, you know, it's, it's government owned yet people complain that it doesn't make money and it's like, well, isn't it not supposed to make money? It's kind of like, that's the social aspect of having a government owned entity. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so much going on, but so back to Europe though, I mean, it, we don't hear a lot about that kind of thing, you know, what's going on in Europe. We just hear the, the big crazy headlines like riots and Austria is kind of going crazy right now. Right? Like, yeah. do you hear about that a lot? Everything's chill in Switzerland compared to say Austria politically, uh, are people getting mad or I hate to bring it into that, but I kind of want to oh, know. I want to know. <laughs> Dude, I mean, as you know, I'm very, very, I don't know how you say that, but like, I'm not a apolitical. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. and and I'm really chilled when it comes to to like the pandemic thing. You know, it's like I, I of course I have my opinion and I read all the news and whatever. I, I I look left and right. Of course I do that, but Switzerland is like you, you've been here, and it's 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 like it's it's really a safe place to 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 be born in and, and to live in. So I would not like complain all over like oh no, like the government is doing everything wrong or whatever. I would never say that because that wouldn't be the truth. But it's hard because like in Switzerland, as the rest of the world, no, like it never happened to anybody here. But the, the, one of the main differences is before the pandemic started, a lot of people didn't even know who's running our country because we don't have a president, <laughs> you know? Right. Like, you don't have a president. What do you have, a prime minister or no? No, it's like it's 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 six it's six it's six people running the country, like from from different different political uh, directions, you know. And and okay. and the thing is, you you always like know one or two, like the ones who are in the media and, and like the ones who do the press stuff. These are the ones you kind of know who they are. But honestly, I didn't know all all six names until the pandemic started, and then suddenly you have like. In Switzerland, where you where you actually are really safe and 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 and, and like the, the money's here, whatever, like everybody feels safe. Now you have like guys from 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 the government coming in front of a camera and telling you what to do. That's like that's new to that's Switzerland, new. right? And and that's also new to to a country like Austria because Austria, I would say, it's 
comparable to, to, to Switzerland. Like it's, it's a rich country. It's, it's good to live there and stuff. Even Germany. I mean, it's, it's hard. And now you got like the government, that's something different to the U S or other countries where we already know, Oh, you got like that one president. And, and if, if, right. if the president speaks a worldwide thing, everybody knows about that, you know, but I mean, Switzerland, honestly, I, I would doubt that even the president of the, the United States would know all the six names of our <laughs> I, government. Dude, I bet you're right. Because, I mean, half the half the people don't even know who the vice president is here in yeah. the U.S. So. <laughs> That's what I mean. So, yeah. That's cool, though. I actually, I can't believe I didn't know that. Maybe I knew that and I forgot that, that you were ruled by six people. But it, But it seems like, one, I'm sure there's – probably plenty of things where it's like okay here's a negative of that here's a negative but just the fact that you don't have as much chance of the ego thing happening right because you're sharing you're, you're a team dynamic rather than i'm the all-powerful i yeah. mean no matter who you are if you have that kind of power you're giving that kind of power you become you can become a brat if you're if you're not prepared for that if you don't have the right sentiments and in, in your personality in your upbringing, whatever it is, right? Bravo, Swiss. The Swiss people uh, are very pragmatic. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, even Germany, even though Germany has like a, a I don't know, even chancellor. How it's called yeah, Chan yeah. Even though he, he's not he's not running the country on his own, you know, you still got like a lot of people behind that and and, and different levels uh, who, who decide with uh, that guy or that woman what ha what's happening. So. I, I think that's why Europe is so, like, at the moment, it's like, oh, what the fuck are we doing with the pandemic, you know? It's like, and, and, and all the restrictions, like, here in Switzerland or even even all Europe, some some stuff just seems so made up, you know? It's like, it's it's like let's try that. Yeah, they're just trying it things. Works. Let's try that. So I guess we're now in, in, in that phase now here in, in Switzerland. But the, the Swiss, honestly, like, the restrictions – are kind of always the same. Now it's like the whole vaccination stuff. So everybody should be vaccinated. It goes slow and slow because like Swiss don't want to let themselves tell something from, from the government. Like, oh, you need to get vaccinated. You got people like, I do what I want. I'm Swiss. You know, it's like, that's, that's, that's a reaction. Like, <laughs> Same with you know, Americans, it's, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like the, but, but here in Switzerland, it's more because like, it's, it's more like the people who are like, who lived a life or, or live a life with they never had to deal with with an idea like that that somebody tells them what to do you know it's like yeah. i think it's more an ego thing like hey whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you can't just show up and tell me what you do like that's not possible in switzerland i think that wow that's frozen we might have to start this baby over and cut it hmm was it you me it was it was you i bet the authorities heard you talking a little too independently <laughs> yeah you're like you know, we got to shut this conversation down. Yeah, let's, let's talk about the punk we play in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I just, I mean, I'm just generally curious in how, how much different life is there as far as like, do you have to? Um, can you go into a shop? Can you go into a restaurant? Do you have to wear a mask when you do, or can you just oh. go in and you're good? No, no, you you go in there with a mask, and then once you sit down, you you take, you take it, it off. off. And you got your your certificate of, of vaccination if you have that, um, yeah. And now, like the only thing that they're talking about right now is like, if you if you're vaccinated twice, like you need you need to be boosted so you can get in with no restrictions. If you're not boosted, you have to make another test. So even though you're vaccinated double, you just do another test. That's like the conversation now with like all the 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 bars and clubs and 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 restaurants. Yeah, that's yeah. Honestly, we're good here. I can tell you. It's like I would not complain. <laughs> good, good. It's, it seems like it. it seems like you're good. I mean, we're good here too. I'm I'm good personally. It's 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 uh things are always changing a little bit, but uh, we haven't done any shows yet. You know, we have MXPX has some shows coming up April, but um, I think it's gonna be good by then. Uh, you know, not that everything will be completely back to the way it was three years ago, but, but just, yeah, I mean, all you can do is just keep moving forward, keep working on whatever you're working on and, and hope for the best. <laughs> and, 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 and as I, like, when I met you or like the, the time that we, we spent together closely, I, I never, th I, like, 
that's what I thought about you. You know, you, you, you just, you just, you just go with kind of with the flow. Like it sounds really stupid, but that's, that's what I do either. Uh, we had like this one tour with, with Chris and the Ataris. We, like we set up a whole two and a half week tour in the UK and we just pushed it, we pushed it twice. And mm -hmm. second, second time it was like, let's just cancel it, you know, because like hanging on to that old thing and just try to reactivate it again and again, you get tired of that shit, you know, because like it's, 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 it's always the same thing. And then people get tired, like, Oh, Hey, but my ticket's still valid, but I can't go to that show, but I've already bought the ticket. So that's when I realized like, no, just move forward. Like mm -hmm. if it doesn't happen, it's like that. And yeah, just I go to the next project. I think you're right on. That's that's exactly kind of how I've I've been dealing with it too. Is just let's keep going, keep working, do yeah. do the best work we can with what we've got. Speaking of which, you guys, I love what Slim Boy's been doing. Um, Slim Boy, your band, you're the bass player, the singer, songwriter. I mean, you guys all work on the songs, but you you write a lot of the main stuff, right? Like the main, you bring the chunk to to the band. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about you have a new album coming out. It might be out by the time people listen to this this podcast. When, when's it coming out? Fourth uh, of uh, February. Fourth of February. Okay. Yeah, not quite. So this will be out before that, but um, it's coming. It's coming real soon. Fourth of February. What's it called? It's the fear, the anger, and most of all your hope. Most of all your hope. It's just like a part. It's just a, 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 a one sentence out of a song. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. No, the thing is, like, it really changed when 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 Fabian uh, came into the band and replaced Tristan, and um, he is more. It's so funny. Sometimes he reminds me a little bit of 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 a, of a young Chris Rowe. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why, but he's he's totally like the, the the way he plays his guitar is very with with like all the delays and stuff very indish like I, I i do like that because like i'm coming mostly from a from a very poppy background from my youth mm -hmm. and 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 then i combined all that with whatever punk means or alternative music so yeah it's it's i guess it's it's getting better and better what we do it's like yeah. to me it's 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 so crazy because like i have so many bands i look up to and and either they had like their big time in the past and then they just got worse and worse and worse and, and, and then you just lose track. Yeah. Yeah. And then there are bands like, that's why like I, I love playing with you or, and that's why I love playing with, with Chris. It's just very stable. Like it's never like a change where you're like, Oh, they tried something really weird on that. Right. <laughs> you know, I, can, yeah. I personally like that a lot because like see up here that's like that's your mxpx collection up here so oh that's why, yeah nice yeah and, and that's right there is the atari so it's like that's why i can listen to 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 you guys and 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 the ataris and, and other bands because it's really stable and i love that like you you just put in one of the records and you're like that's cool either way which one it is that's awesome and, yeah and then to me i just feel i started kind of bad when I started with my own band. Uh, it was just like a rush and I, I got kicked out of, of my first band and in Switzerland I got kicked into this media thing. Like I had like a major label, it was uh, watching EMI in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And they just they just kind of pushed me to like release just something, you know, and, and that's what I did. And and listening to it today it's just it's just horrifying. It's like, whoa, what's that? I like that's not me, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it was a and stepping that, stone to get to where you, you needed to be, right? Yeah. Well, and also that, a lesson learned of just don't put out anything just to put it out. Yeah, totally. Be, be proud of it, yeah. Yeah. We're and, going and, and, yeah, yeah, go ahead. And and, and, and when and when we recorded the, the, the record with you in in, um, in Bremerton, that was actually like the second record I really loved doing and and, and I felt like the songs are good and, and, and it's like it's a plan behind it. And as you said, it's just not put out just to put it out. It's like, it's with, with a good thought. And Fabian, the new guitar player, that that's pretty cool. Like he recorded his old band in his rehearsal room. And, and he was like, Hey, I really think we should 
track it on our own and just let it let it mix by some some good guy mm -hmm. and and i was like no way i can do that because like to me coming from like having um the first two records were like on tape recorded so to me a studio was always somewhere you go there and you have like a person at least one who knows what to do yeah. you know it's right. like he he guides you through the whole process. And that definitely used to be very true almost across the board. But now with technology, you know, you can do so much without really knowing what the hell you're doing, right? Like you just like, I have this computer. I have this program. As long as you can get everything kind of hooked up, you can make sounds happen. And then if you have a good mixer, I mean, sure, Fabian's probably telling you this, right? If you have a good mixer, they can change those sounds and make them better. You know, so it's, it's I mean, there's, there's, Obviously, there's balance, and everybody's a little different, but I, I like that you guys, that Fabian convinced you to try that. Yep. So let me ask you, so the, the hopeless, and so for those that a lot of people won't know, you had, you're talking about Cancer, the band Cancer came to the States, came to Monkey Trench Studios here, recorded, it was awesome. You guys, I think I had a $800 heating bill after you guys left, because you guys literally had all the heaters cranked the whole time. <laughs> I was like, all right, we'll we'll, we'll let that go. Thank you. <laughs> but if you were Americans, I'd be like, hell no, turn this shit down. But uh, <laughs> so that was cancer, and then and then uh, was Sven ever in cancer? So Sven played with yeah, All no, Stars no, as no, well. No, no. The record with you was actually already on the Slim Boy again. Cancer oh, was it Slim Boy again? Really? Yeah. The cancer was just uh, Sven actually joined us because I split up. Oh, like I, I quit Slim Boy because we were in 2009 because uh, before I met you, yeah. um, I was in a position where they offered me, uh, they offered Slim Boy like a teeny, uh, how do you say, like a teen contract, which means you get paid like a certain amount of money per month, but you have to do whatever the management is saying. Like yeah. they, they bring you to TV shows and whatever. It's like the radio shows in America kind of. We call that here, we call that a development deal. So yes. they're supposed to develop you as an artist, yeah. mold you to be a product, the correct yeah. product for whatever they're trying to do. Yeah, that's that's so many like teen pop singers yeah. and stuff. Get and that those was deals. because we, we were supposed to to uh, support Yellow Card as Slim Boy in Europe, and uh, Yellow Card split up, and uh, we had to have like a, because all merch and everything was printed, so we tried to get like um, another tour we can jump on, and that's when we jumped on a tour with a German band, which was kind of that pop product thing, and it was a fun tour, it was all good, but then their manager offered us that deal, and he sent me um, to a band from Germany uh, to say hi, to be like part uh, of their tour for, for, for the next half year, so I went there. And that night, I was like, no way I'm going to do that. It's like, I started bad with the band for me, but like, there's no way I can walk into that. Like, we already had this. Pumpkin. What do you mean? What do you mean by what? What, what did you see? That it was, was like, just like, it was like, I met this band and, 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 and it wasn't, to me, it wasn't, it wasn't a real band. It genuine? Was just, it was kind of fake? or Yeah. Yeah. It was just a product, you know? Yeah. And. And, and and like they were just immediately talk talking about like hey which TV shows shows are you going to make like what are you gonna wear on stage and stuff and like I didn't even know these people I'm like no so you haven't thought about that the tour is like in, in a half a year or something and <laughs> so I kind of felt quitting is the best to do because like now's the time and you still can do something else which you think is cool so. I started like this cancer project with Silvio mm -hmm. and uh, we needed a guitar player and Sven actually was in Switzerland in like, let's call it the punk scene in Switzerland. Sven is, yeah, it's well known. Like he, he had, he had like his band snitch. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you just know that band at, at some point. And um, I just called him and I was like, dude, like I think we should meet and just check it out. And then, we did that and yeah, we just got along together perfectly because he was in his like punk world, whatever, every song started with a that, 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 like everything kind of sounded the same. But so am I, you know, like my stuff was the same too. And then it just worked out fine and we got friends and yeah, that's kind of the history with cancer. 
and then on the last tour we did with you with with zebra head mm -hmm. that's where we actually decided or th that's when i decided to bring back kind of the slim boy thing because to me i mean cancer first the name was always like a little bit ah, why, why do you call it cancer yeah people didn't understand it in other countries for sure yeah yeah so to me it was it was a, it was a a logical step to just go back to the slim boy thing and i kind of realized when we played this tour with 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 zebrahead i mean i was always aware that we are just like the guys who play with you for a certain time nobody knew how long this time was going to be you know but then i was like okay this is like you met tom uh during like a year before or something and then you started working with tom and i kind of realized okay this is going to separate ways at some points so i just want to be in a position where i feel comfortable with the band I'm in when, when MXPX is gone, because you and MXPX were like, damn, you were like the, the, a big part for five, six years. It, it's yeah. insane, you know? And, but to me and Silvio, it was always like really clear that we are not MXPX, you know? <laughs> it's like that this is just like, it's not a permanent situation. And we didn't want it to be in a permanent situation as MXPX. And so going back to Slimbo was good. And yeah. um, then we, we got from there. And then we came to your studio and did like the first record on the Slimboy again. And yeah, that was, That's that awesome. was good. It was yeah. also, it was a nice ending, you know, like honestly looking back, it, it couldn't be any more perfect because it was like we, we played this last tour. We played the show in London. We came to you in the studio. It was just a natural ending, which was so, so good. Yeah, it was great. And you guys were always fun to travel with. And, you know, those times were crazy. I mean, for those that don't know, MX Peaks All-Stars, when there was just a period of time when Tom and Yuri got jo you know, the, their full-time jobs. They couldn't tour. And I was just like, what do I what do? I, do? I got to figure something out. I tumbled down, was kind of doing stuff and a little bit. I'm sh not sure the timeline, but I think it was like after tumble down was kind of done. Or yeah, maybe it just was during I, I can't remember exactly I mean, but you haven't played any tumble down shows after we met okay so it was right after tumble down then yeah you said, uh jack was in was with you we yep. played one off shows where you flew in and and i just played with you and jack so it was like it was for, for one or two months it was just like a, a, a kind of a mixed thing mm -hmm. um, and then we did the tour um together with you acoustically and then we just got from there yeah okay so so i remember so when when uh when the guys couldn't do anything i was like what am i gonna do we have this sh tour booked in japan and that's when i was like okay i called up chris rowe i was like hey chris will you play you know in japan with me we're gonna go to jakarta as well uh maybe a couple other cities in in indonesia and we ended up doing a full south southeastern so, yeah, Southeast Asian, sorry, let me say that correctly. <laughs> Southeast Asian tour, um, Kuala Lumpur, Singapore, um, and that was with Chris Rowe, and that was the first MXPX, like, all-stars thing. And Chris Wilson also played drums. Um, and I love Chris, but, uh, you know, and I, I ended up, because of that, I ended up later playing in Australia with the Ataris. I played bass. <laughs> and Chris played, you know played guitar for MXPX. So it was uh, it was just a, a kind of like a makeshift thing, you know, and then it was a a little inkling of a path forward. It was like, okay, I, I don't I don't think MXPX is done yet. Maybe we can get I don't even think I was thinking about Tom and Yuri coming back, but I was like, they'll probably come back. But right now let's just keep this moving. I don't know what's gonna happen. And then I was doing all those solo tours and that's that's you know where we met. And uh, man, it, that really saved mxpx you're definitely part of that so i mean yeah it, it was amazing i remember having shows well uh netherlands or am i saying that wrong i think it was in the netherlands or in in um holland not in holland well same thing right same, same thing <laughs> what do i think b sharp c flat or c uh <laughs> uh anyway I just remember that show like just 
just the crowd, you know, like we we're playing punk shows and people were just having an amazing time, you know? So yeah, I, I look back on those times fondly. So thanks for being part of it. And that brought us to you guys recording that record, your, your EP hopeless and addicted. I remember that hearing those songs, um, Hey brother, hopeless and addicted. Those two songs. Oh my God, dude. I mean, those are still songs I have in my, like, I have like a punk, song playlist like just some of my favorite punk songs right those two songs are in there like those are some of my favorite songs in general really Thanks. great really i don't know like i wish i would have written those songs so yeah. well done everybody go check it out hopeless and addicted hey brother two different songs um also uh i, I didn't write it down i can't remember the name of it maybe it was like believe or something like that um uh, off the believe. new record what is it yeah no, no, you had like the the one we recorded with you. We, no, 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 like, no, the recent record, maybe. Oh, that uh, your, right your most now we recent have, record. Like the the one we have now, like the famous, like the most, the one I love the most is called Everglow. That's like we, we did a video for that one. And, That's um, not the song I was thinking of. It was like something okay. believe or believe something or. It's on your it's on your full length, so it must be okay. on the one that that you recorded. Oh, uh, believe in you, you mean? Believe in you, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. That really? was like, yeah, I, I wrote this one when that was so fun because I, I talked to Chris about that because he's a, such a big fan of, of the Beach Boys mm -hmm. and Brian Wilson. And that was like, that's why we called the record Sail on Sailor, because that was because that's a, a Beach Boys song I really loved. And the okay. Believe in You, like that song, Believe Not in You. Not after my daughter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Even though she was first. <laughs> she was born already yeah she was first she came I in know. the studio when you guys were in there yeah yeah she played the drums <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it, it was it was um i started this song believe in you and 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 the thing is like that's what i told you i'm from a very poppy background and 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 with time the whole punk thing yeah they just crossed paths and and to this day one second can you make yeah. sure that door is closed up there thank you sorry and to and to this day like these two genres go in one for me, you know, I can't write a pop song and not mm -hmm. a punk song on a record. It has to be like both of these worlds and believe in you. It's like, really, it's, it's just a ballad. It's just a pop song. And, and I couldn't like finish that. And I, my uncle uh, invited me to see the, the beach boys in, in Basel. So I went there and that was the first time. And I saw Brian Wilson, and all these guys there, and they sang Sail on Sailor as a special song uh, that night. And that's why I just, I took like so many words, phrases out of Beach Boys songs and just put it into this Believe in You song. That's just my, that's my little homage uh, to the Beach Boys. <laughs> that's dope. It starts like this. Yeah, I mean, it gets into it, but I, I really like that song. And, and it's nothing like those, you know, my other two favorites, the Hopeless and Addicted, Hey Brother. Yeah. Hey Brother is just like, bah, bah. it's like, it, it gets you going, it gets you moving. And that's yeah. kind of what MXPX is, is all about, is like trying to write songs that get you going, get you moving. So, well but done. But hey, you, you, I mean, I really want to say, because you, you just over that a little bit too fast for me. Sure, you sure, said, go ahead. Thank you for the MXPX time. But... See, the same thing really goes back to you because I'm really aware and, and I would say Sylvia and me are like kind of the same opinion when it comes when it comes to that time. It's like you like Tom Chichilla was or, or also like told me so many times, like, yeah, thanks thanks for, for, for like kind of doing that and make sure MXP goes on and on. But to us, it, like what we what we had these five to six years, it was insane. Like at some point you probably didn't realize what, 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 what you are giving to, to, to me and Silvio or that Tristan and Sven, you know, it's like, because to you, it was still normal playing these punk shows in, in, in Netherlands or wherever. But I remember there was this one show, um, on that first tour we did, it was in Belgium and it was a small youth center. And to me, I must say, that was my second tour I booked for an international band. It was Hey Mike before that. That's with Benjamin Harper who played in um, in Yellow Card. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was actually 
my first tour I booked, and then I booked an, a second tour for Phoenix TX in Europe, and you were actually the third one coming over I, I took care of, you know? Yeah. And in Europe, MXPX was like, dude, you were like still so big in the scene, as you still are, but like back then, to me, that was like, oh, that's like a big step forward. And when you asked me, like, if we want to back you up on, on, on these shows, I remember like Sven and I, like we were crying, you know, like that was, that was like outstanding. I couldn't believe it. So what you gave us throughout these years is probably way more than you can ever imagine. <laughs> wow. That, that's amazing. Dude, that's awesome. I just makes, makes me think about the underground in London and mm -hmm. playing that sold out show with you guys. And it was so packed and just like just bodies flying everywhere. It was a great way to, I think we ended that, Tour no, that... it was not the underworld. It was uh, the the Candish Town with Screeching Weasel. No, 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 I was thinking about Underground. That's the show I'm thinking about. Screeching Weasel was after that, but okay, are you, uh, but, that but... was the last show you saw, just as a general show. I was just thinking, yeah, just generally, yeah. like that show was. Aw I remember like meeting Tristan's dad. He looks like uh, Steven hey. Seagal. <laughs> 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 looks exactly like Steven Seagal. <laughs> Anyways, like so, like, I have memories of like being in the in the Underground, mm -hmm. in down there, in in. Um, Man, what a cool, yeah, just just insane. Like, because MXPX never played the underground, you know, back in the day. It was so, you know, we played the garage and we played, I don't know, uh, Fiddler's Green or, you know, these other shows, whatever, yeah. you know, venues, bigger venues. But we never had played that place, you know, so I'd played it with you the first time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, like, to me, because I did the booking back then and, like, being part of the band, I think we saw a lot of places we would definitely never ever go again with the, with what we know now about it you know it's like but then <laughs> to me that was like shit it's like i got my carrera and somehow i need to fill these dates and of course some of these dates were just like collaborations with promoters i would never ever work again because like it was just the first guy on 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 on, on the sheet like Oh, you paid money. Uh, you got a venue, and and you you don't seem a hundred percent sketchy. So let's try it. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trial and, and then, error. Yeah, and then you're in a youth center somewhere in Belgium, and you're just like, oh, I hope he likes it. You know, because to me, you were like, like back then, to me, you were just like my career from MXPX coming over to Europe, and you have seen it all. Like, that was my status. When you came over here, yeah. and then I was—I I remember, like I was watching your 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 reactions and, and your face reactions. I just always try to read them because, like, when you saw like a venue, I was like, no. <laughs> like, did I ever? It. Did I ever have a have a bad reaction? Can you? I, I mean, I haven't asked you on bad reactions. Just I, I wouldn't want to force it. That, <laughs> yeah, because. To be honest, Joel, like I don't really think that way. Like if something bugs me and I notice, sure, I'll say something. But like for the most part, when I walk into a venue, I'm not thinking, oh, whoever booked this, I'm going to be mad at. Or, you know, like yeah. I'm not thinking that. I'm only thinking of what's the situation? Where yeah. Where's the dressing room? Where's Is there a shower here? Yeah. <laughs> is no, there I mean, a nice that, toilet? The, the, the stress obviously came from my side. It was the pressure I put on me. It was – was nothing to do actually with you. You were just the one I thought needs to be impressed. You know what I mean? And that's like totally logical because like I'm from I like I'm the non real booker in a small band together with you in a van going to a show. It's like it's just two different worlds. So yeah, yeah. no no, I mean that that's what I can say. It's like it's crazy that we never ever got in a really bad argument during all these years, you know, and I think that that says it all because I kind of know when things go wrong and I try to fix it before they go wrong, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we never had like, I mean, we had one or two shows where I was like, why did we even go here? I mean, I remember this one show in Graz in Austria. That was to me, that was the point where I was like, no, I need to, be fo more focused on, on the bookings. And mm. and the thing is, like, when Tom Cicilla actually uh, crossed our history, and, like, I still have four tours with you, or even five, 
where he was involved and and I had like this 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 devil on on my shoulder called Tom Chichilla and like he just picked everything apart every 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 show uh, I offered he was like yeah but is it good and, and we need need to change that and this blah blah, blah. and so these tours got better and better, of course. I remember this one tour where Chris Rowe was supporting acoustically, um, where the Underworld was part of that. That was just a perfect tour to me because that was like, even with the tour poster and everything, it's still in my office. That was like the tour where I, where I thought like, shit, if that if that could be like the standard for the rest of my life, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you got to work to it, work your way up to it. Yeah, but I mean, so you have a different perspective because I, I had seen you as you were a local venue booker. You booked shows into your venue in Basel. Yep. And, and so just the fact that you had initiative, you had the sort of – you maybe you didn't know everybody or know how to do every single thing when it came to booking a tour, but you were willing to try and you were willing to put yourself out there. And I think that's honestly what's most important. You know, you had, you had a very – analytical mind about it um whereas i don't have that anal analytical mind in in that aspect about booking like i'm not thinking about shows that way i'm i'm not even honestly thinking about shows <laughs> you know i'm thinking about my own like okay my own set and what i gotta do and that's it um there's so much more to think about you know like it's it's insane i mean and then you you add to that the travel and the the hotels and where you you know the logistics of Who's going to stay where? Who, you know, do we have enough room to fit in this? What do we have? Uh, what were those things called? We tr we toured in. Well, we, we at one point we ended up in a little mini RV from the guy from uh, yeah Joseph. Joseph, yeah. From <laughs> what? Where did he live? In in the Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Yes, 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 yes. I love the Czech Republic. Yeah. Such a beautiful country. Beautiful cities. Yeah. Great. Yeah, but but I mean that that that's the thing. It's like we just like I traveled. Like I, I looked at traveling, how how we traveled with Slim Boy, you know, like all the tours we did, like kind of the safe money stuff and and how luxury it has to be. Mm -hmm. And and after the first tour with all the hotels and stuff, of course I realized if I give you. A reason why we go with all we and, and just try to make overnight runs and not pay for hotels you will get the point because yeah you, you're smart and you run this band long enough and, mm -hmm. and, and you're definitely not not pissing around laying in an RV but it was just so funny sometimes when, when Sven was in the band because Sven, <laughs> yeah I'm laughing about it because I yeah I, I know anyway, I, go ahead. <laughs> but the thing is like Sven was also such a huge like as i said he's a punk kid you know so like he knows all these bands and of course he he, he was also a fan of you and sometimes i was just looking at you guys laying next to each other and i'm like how fucked up is that you know it's like <laughs> it's like there's then which i was where i was at shows uh from his band and i thought like they were pretty cool then there's my career from mx peaks and then there's me and then there's this RV. So at some point it was really surreal uh, traveling with you guys and, and, and just bringing all that together in my head. So it's like, uh, it was like the Swiss all stars, really, you know, like all the, <laughs> did yeah. you know um, that, that when we, when we, I had this, um, um, last week, i um, I went to my storage and I found this paper, um, where Zebra had put on, 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 on the beds, uh, in 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 the bus when we toured with them and they had this like this Swiss curfew. Did you do you remember that one? It was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I I really laughed out loud because it's so fun. Like it happens to us every time we went on tour with with this band called Doggy Dog in Germany with a bus, yeah. and then it was the same thing. The, the singer and 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 the drummer were like are like the, the ones who go to sleep a little bit earlier, and 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 I was like, yeah, hey we're not like big party people. So he was like, oh, that's cool. So you sleep with us in, in, in the separate rooms where it's four bunk beds and you sleep with us there. And it took us fucking two days. And it was like, yeah, these Swiss guys are perfect to tour with because it's so funny. I don't know what it is. We always have that. It's just like 
at some point it's just like yeah it could be named the swiss tour the swiss guys the swiss all stars to explain that a little bit more you know you got you know can can you do you remember what the actual note said on the bus on zebrahead the swiss yeah, it was swiss tour swiss curfew, it was uh, it's like shut shut your mouth after 10 o'clock or, 10 o- <laughs> or something just like ridiculously early <laughs> lights out at 10 well yeah. that tour was insane because zebrahead would party not everybody in the band, but like a couple of the guys would be up till four, five a.m. every night. I ended up getting roped into that crowd. I was up till four every night, probably, and we'd wake up the next day in, in mid morning, sometimes noon, sometimes one o'clock. I'd be stumbling out of the the bunk, and then we'd go and do the we'd do our like workouts in the venue, like in the middle of the venue. You remember we'd all you you probably laughing your ass off about us. No, 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 no. <laughs> You just you just looked so bad some days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were like half dead. I mean, that's the thing. No parents to tell you to go to sleep when when it's bedtime, you know. And and I think that's probably why what it was so funny about you Swiss guys, you know, going to bed pretty much the same time every night, yep. like clockwork. And we're just like, how how do you how do you do that? Like. I just want to be up. I don't want to miss out. It's like the FOMO thing. I don't know what it is, but I've always been that way. Not even on tour. I'm, I'm that way at home where I've gotten better at it, to be honest. But I want to, I'm just up. I'm up. I'm working late. I'm a lot of the songs I write, I write late, you know, that kind of thing, you know? And, and so, but it just starts to wear on you after a while. Yeah. I like, but, I, but I guess like that's, that that's actually, it's a lifestyle thing. You know, it's like, um, me, I have like, even though I have a regular job, I'm used to to be home at at some point in the evening. I'll make dinner, uh, maybe watch some TV, whatever, uh, do something. But then I have like a because like my my wife actually she gets up uh, in the morning at like five thirty six when wow. she starts working. So I kind of. I'm, I'm used to be up early, you mm-hmm. know, I still could sleep for another two, three hours without a doubt. I, I can do that. But it's like you get your eyes open. You're like, oh, it's it's like it's it's a new day. It's like here we are. So and, and bringing that to a two week tour, it's just normal. You know, it's like to me, I'll play the show, whatever. I set it up and, 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 and we, we load it out. And then it's like, oh, cool. It's like it's almost midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it's time for sleep. Like my body's kind of asking for it. And that's the same with, with even with Silvio. We, we have like a, almost a similar lifestyle when it comes to that. And honestly, I never partied anyway. So it's like to me, seeing people starting to actually partying, to me, that's like, oh, that, that's cool for them. You know, it's that's like cool for me, them. <laughs> like kind of annoying for me. No, not at all. That's what I mean. That's the same thing. I never smoked or drank in my life. But people are so, so – uh, like um, when I tell them, like I like I like the smell of weed, for example, mm-hmm. and I like the smell of cigarette smoke. So when they when they cut it out, people from smoking in in clubs, mm-hmm. I was like, no, that 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 that's fucked up. I like that that like even I even like the, the smell of beer and that whatever. was part of your the atmosphere of of yeah, the show. Totally. Yeah, and I can sit there, but and, and just watch a party or anything. But if it gets like active and it's like oh you do something like you just just drink one beer after another and and you feel like a group of people next to you are just having their own little world now that's just like the time where i just stand up and and i can go because i don't miss it you know what i mean it's Mm -hmm. like i would never tell people like hey shut up or whatever like that's the thing i like the most being like surrounded by whatever like drunk people or noise and stuff (laughs) i do love it but I just don't do it. It's, yeah. I, yeah. Amazing. No. And you never, you never did. And, and, and that's the thing is like, you were always chill. It was good. You know, you, you yeah. take care of things. No problem. Yeah. Totally. You, <laughs> you, you always did that. I love that. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I enjoyed those tours cause it was different. It was like, it wasn't the same. Like I didn't have to worry about really anything. It was, it was, it wasn't like being on vacation. I mean, cause there's, you got to, be here and you had to pay attention and be able to sing and all that. So, I mean, I did what I had to do, but, but still it was, it was so much less, there was no pressure for me. Yeah. Like during those years, it was just not like, you're good. Like every, every night the show's good and we got, 
we continue to get better and i just enjoyed that you know i enjoyed being able to stay up at f- till 4 a.m and not because yeah. like right now if i was staying up till 4 a.m at home i'd be like freaked out i'd be like what's gonna happen tomorrow when i'm so tired or you know like i'm just like am i gonna get sick because i'm tired you know <laughs> stupid <Yeah>. stuff <laughs> but on tour it's like different because you, you know no one's gonna wake me up until like literally probably three o'clock if i'm still not up they might check on me you know yeah. so you could just sleep all day if you want to yeah, and yeah. Not that that's like healthy to do all the time, but sometimes it's kind of like nice. It was nice for me to, to be able to experience that. Of course. And, and, and you were on tour with, with Zebra. I, I guess if you're drinking, if you're used to drink alcohol from time to time, you needed to stay up late because oh, yeah. they wouldn't let you to go to bed. I mean, the thing is why they let me go to sleep because they knew after the second day they were like, I drink a beer. I don't drink. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> and you got like the looks and you're like i'll be in bed yes okay and nobody misses you because you're you're not partying so <laughs> i guess for you it was it was yeah it was you had to do it <laughs> they would they would have forced you <laughs> yeah maybe yeah yeah no we had i mean just so many good times like just yeah. par- everybody would just be dance like a bunch of dudes dancing on this bus while it's going down the highway in europe it was hilarious. Oh, that was the Macarena dance. Macarena, yeah. I mean, you, if anybody that knows Zebrahead knows they're crazy. <laughs> but Good, in a good way. In a good way, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I had the best time with those guys. Like, Thin Lizzy constantly being blasted and cheers to everyone. Cheers, 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 drink, cheers, cheers you know. Man, And then good you times. got Dan Palmer. You got Dan Palmer with that mini amplifier. Mm-hmm. And you you don't see him, but you just hear him. He just walks around the venue, walks around the bus constantly. I'm warming up, I'm warming up. <laughs> always warm. <laughs> yeah, always warm. It gives you a really bad feeling about your warming up. Yeah, I'll be like, man, I'd be good if I did that like literally as often as he did. I'd be yeah. really good. Yeah. And that's why he's so good. He's just constantly yeah. playing, constantly noodling. I mean, that's the thing is like I love. I I really when. All my experiences with MXPX touring, you know, was great, but it was so cool to be able to tour with different people, you know, to experience a different band and their thing. Like, oh, that's different than what MXPX would do if we were just on our bus, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I really embraced that. I feel like I just like just decided I'm just going to go with, like you said, go with the flow. I'm going to go with the flow. I'm going to have some fun. But honestly, (laughs) we... Totally realized that because the first two, obviously, it was just like getting to know each other and like, oh, what's he doing? Like, how is he and stuff? And and same from your side. But then after, on the second one, we already I already recognized that that you just kind of let it go in 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 a, in a good way. And um, but I must say, from the musical part side, when you gave me like that set list uh, of what we're going to play on on that first full tour i mean to i think the other side of the story is we were always really like strong and 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 to our to ourselves like these songs must they have to like sound as perfect as they can you know what i mean it's like we rehearsed all these details so so you guys rehearsed in basil without me to prepare for me arriving i remember you telling me about that and yeah. you actually sent me a video clip of you doing a song. You're like, how does this sound? Yeah, yeah, correct. That was but cool. I guess it was important because you gave us a chilled mic and MXPX version, you know, like kind of open up your arms and like, okay, cool, I'm, I'm going to do that. But I don't know what it is, actually. <laughs> I guess we play shows together. And, um, and we just realized pretty quick we have to be – like top notch on on the songs, like no exceptions, and that's what we always tried. So I guess um, that's why it was still really serious because, like fr- from our side, it was like he needs to be happy. Like this, the fans need to be happy. Like the shows must sound good and, and at least good, but better, great. And 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 you were chilled, and 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 you you would let us do that. So I, I guess it was like a perfect combination for, for these years, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. You guys, because we were really, uh, like, we, were, we were scared the first time in the U.S. I remember that, <laughs> like this San Diego show, and 
and then I know we we went to Denver and and your one of your 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 uh, roadie guys came came there. I, I guess you just I don't know his name, like big guy, and he told us like Leprechaun, Denver, not James Barrett, different guy. I, I guess it was him. I, I can't remember, but I just remember like that guy told me like, hey, I saw a hundred of MX Peak shows in the past, right? Uh, you better be good. <laughs> <laughs> and and I kind of realized that the first time at that moment I was like oh fuck now we're in like we're in the states like he's like that's where Mike is from you know it's like yeah <laughs> okay that's probably different <laughs> and people but, are gonna be like wait wait what happened <laughs> like what's yeah. going yeah some people it, yeah some people not not the not the girl in 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 Denver I remember her she 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 just came up to me and she said, "Yeah, I need to sign her uh, her her vinyl." And I was like, "Yeah, dude, it's I, I would, but I'm not Tom." And she's like, "Yeah, but you need to sign it. I know you're Tom." I was like, <laughs> "I know you're Tom." <laughs> she said, "I know you're Tom." And I was like, "I know I'm not, and I can speak Swiss German maybe to prove it." So I just talked some some German words, and she was even more impressed that Tom can. can talk to her. <laughs> Tom can speak German. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Swiss German. Yeah. So I'm really sorry. I never told that story, but uh, I signed the vinyl with Tom. <laughs> Good. Now that you know, when people are that adamant, just make them happy. They're, yeah. The only thing they're gonna do if you say no is like they're gonna go home and say Tom is an asshole, <laughs> <laughs> and he speaks German. Yeah. What a dick. You know, whatever, you know, like, I don't know what I'm saying, but, <laughs> but yeah, you did the right thing, man. I, I remember it must have been hard for you because you guys won. Thank you for doing it. But you, you worked merch. We didn't have a separate merch person on most of those tours and you would work merch. Sometimes I would come by, but you were, most of the time it was you, you were, you set it up, you counted, you had money, the whole deal. And that I got to say, that makes me happy. It made me happy then. Makes me happy now to think about it. That's not. That's the hardest job, probably. Of think so. That's the one I, I do. I, and that's what I, you love. Yeah. I think it's the hardest job for me because it's like talking to people is great, but it definitely saps energy. And so, like, that's why I don't like to talk to, to a lot of people constantly be, right before I jump on stage. I'm good with it after. After I can, yeah. whatever. I don't care. Uh, but yeah. So, so to me, it's a big deal. So thank yeah. you for that. Thanks. I guess to me, it's the, the thing I love the most. It's because I am not 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 the front man on on, on these shows. I I totally get 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 your uh, point of view because to you, it's like doing all of that and interact with 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 the fans. That's like that's probably too much. You know what I mean? But to me, it was like people show up and it was like a ego massage sometimes you know people come up and like hey you guys sound really good or, or um, where you from yeah, like they were interested interested in why we are playing with Mike Carrera and that's a whole other thing it's like no big photo uh, and, and and signature stress at all um, and yeah and I like selling merch that's what I do now here in Switzerland for for a lot of fans uh, I kind of do still do that I love go there and just set up to me that's a little bit of, of, of a yoga moment, you know? It's like, I go there, I just make sure everything's, it's like it's like Chris Rowe, when you look at his merch table and somebody just like touches his photograph and just moves it a little bit, he's like, he's right there. And <laughs> Puts it back. Yeah. O OCD Chris. <laughs> yeah, totally. He's, but yeah, I like that. It's like, yeah, that's why. No, that was, that was the most fun part, um, besides playing music and, and travel in general. Uh, yeah, I love that, and um, it's so cool to see like people merch thing next to the music is something that people really makes happy. It's so cool. Like I love when people come to your merch booth and they just get like the CD or whatever, the shirt, and then yeah, you're just... like that's why we play shows to like so people like discover the band and be like, oh, I want to, I want to get that CD or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Nowadays, I mean, I haven't done shows in a little while, but people probably just straight up go to their whatever they're streaming spotify apple music whatever amazon deezer whatever title uh they just pull it up right away right so you never you wouldn't necessarily know that they do that you don't get that sort of like them asking you but it's okay a but, but still with a band like mxpx or even slim boy you 
if you bring a good shirt, people will buy that. You know, it's like yeah. they wouldn't go to Amazon and, and just order like a fake shirt. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, true. They're right. Like there's shirts right there, but I'm just going to order it online. <laughs> yeah, which which could be, you never know. But but I mean, you still bring your art on, on T-shirts or a vinyl or whatever. I mean, dude, your box sets, you know what I mean? It's, imagine that. That's like within a streaming whatever craziness right you put out that box set and and, and it blew off and, and people talking about it because it's that's something like that's why i'm i'm buying vinyls like i'm not a, a vinyl player listener i just buy vinyls i have like an emotional um connection to it yeah like i want to have like this record on vinyl and i want to have it from that time i don't want to have like the reissue just the, the 37th reissue mm -hmm. um so I get that, yeah. And shirts, I, I guess, hopefully shirts are here for a long time still. <laughs> Band shirts. T-shirts aren't a thing anymore all of a sudden. Like, what? Would what would be, be, what's next after a T-shirt? Is it like the turtleneck? Just, just, I don't know. We, we, we'll see. I guess we'll, well Let's see. keep T-shirts. I like T-shirts. T-shirts yeah, are nice. So, yeah. <laughs> I remember this um, when, we, when we went to Australia with you. We had this one funny story um, when we got back. You you gave me because I took we went to Germany on a, on a two week tour and there was uh, some merch left over. It was like four boxes in Australia was left over and I was like, dude, let's just take them with us because like we just sell them in in in, in Germany. There there are no no tour dates on the back, so why yeah. shouldn't we? And you were like, oh, that's a great idea. So we packed like all our equipment and and suitcases full and we still had three boxes ass boxes so we brought them in sydney to the airport and you were you you were taking a different flight so we were uh, on, on on the airport and i was like yeah we got three extra boxes and she told me yeah that's like a, a an extra total of like 600 something dollars in like australian dollars i was like i mean for 600 dollars we, we can reprint the double of that amount in germany yeah, yeah. so yeah what can we do she's like yeah there's a trash um if you go down the hallway on, the, on your right side there's a trash you can you can leave it there it was a trash room a big trash room yeah so there was a guy coming with us and i remember like i realized that he just opened up the door without any batching or anything and we were in a trash room and he said like, you you can leave it here so we just put it there and like went went on with the check-in and so after the check-in was done she was like yeah just go straight down the hallway to the gates and I told Silvio, like, dude, that's that's the exact hallway we, we just went for for, 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 the, for the trash storage. And, I mean, we just could go in there and just grab the boxes like we were already checked in. We, we, could, we could just put it in our snares, in the guitar cases, because we needed to get it out because it was too heavy. When yeah. we put all that stuff in our personal luggage. Right. We, Get it back out. So you had yeah. your bags and you were going to drop them off. The, yeah. the checked bags, you were going to yeah, drop them. It was overweight stuff with equipment. <laughs> amazing. They didn't take it right away. They tagged it and gave it to you to go yeah. drop. And, oh, yeah, my we, God. That's amazing. So, so we walked down the hallway and I was like, there's no one here. So we just went in the trash room, reopened up our cases, put all the shirts back in there. <laughs> And closed it, had the tags already on, they were checked in. We just needed to, to, to give it to the guy. We're like, here, this is our guitar and our snare drum and whatever. And he's like, thank you. He just checked it in. So we came to Germany and we had all the shirts with us. It was so cool. <laughs> that is amazing. I remember that trip. It was such a it was such a trip because we came from Australia during the summertime. We were in Melbourne and it was so nice. You guys were just chilling on the beach there. I remember I had an earlier flight, so you guys were going to go to the beach, and I was like, all right, I got to go. See you later. I go on my flight. We fly into Berlin, Germany, and it's snow everywhere. It was like a winter wonderland of just ice and snow and just so cold, bitter cold from the summer, you know, just hot, yeah. hot. Uh, but I went to the Ramones Museum. Yeah, and you did this on your own because you played an acoustic show there. And, yeah. Um, you did this on your own because we got stuck in Munich. We couldn't fly to Berlin directly because of the snow. Because of the snow. So we, yeah, we had to be in Munich a day and then with the train going to Berlin for the first show day. That was like, I was probably never ever 
any tired more tired than that on that show i could like fall asleep on my feet on, <laughs> yeah for it because it was just like thinking back it was like a few hours back ago you were on the beach in sydney it's like what <laughs> that was so just weird like, it was really weird so and that that was the tour we started with itchy no yeah the german the tour german was, german tour yeah and i remember um that tour we went to new zealand hawaii um, Denver, San Diego. Do you know that we actually, somebody told me that after, after I told him where we flew and he was like, we, the Swiss guys, we actually won a whole day in our lives. You got a whole day back. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because of, cause once you cross the international date line, we just actually flew around the fucking globe for you for four shows within six days or something and you went back you never went back the other way you just kept going so that's why you yeah. you, you gained it a was, day to us it was singapore we we went there i uh, visited my my um my wife's brother he lives in singapore we went there for two days then we went to new zealand new zealand hawaii denver San. i mean denver san diego was kind of going back but not really and and then uh, you drove us to Los, Los Angeles and we flew home. So that was just like one big circle. Yeah. And I remember like when we came home from that trip, that was like we we didn't do any phone call or anything within the band for at least a week or two because it was so stressful. It was just like, <laughs> leave me alone for like – how long I need to, you know, it's like, I remember something about your visas too. Was that that trip or was it a different trip where your visas to the U S were like, all right, just don't say anything. Just show up, say, you know, you're there to record or whatever. No, the thing allegedly, is, allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have any visa until that trip because that trip was actually the first time we entered the USA. Uh, to legally, with, legally or, or Hawaii. We yeah. Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. And the guy actually looked at us, and then we always split it up on 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 the lanes. You know, we never got uh, like all the three of us together through the border. So you actually look as a band, anyways. So we had like Sylvia go that way, me that, and, and Tristan the other way. So the guy was like, uh, "So you guys are a band?" I was like, "Yeah, mm -hmm. but we're just here for for for, for vacation stuff." And he told us. Honestly, if there were there wasn't so many people on the line right now, I would check it out and make you fly home right away. That's what he said. Oh, oh, oh. yikes! Yeah, and then that was like the, the the moment where we where I was like, we need because we didn't know how many tours we're gonna play with you, but we knew that there's this U.S. tour coming up uh, with uh, with Alistair. We played and keep flying. Um, that was the time where we, we applied for, for actually a visa. But the problem is what visa do we need? Because like, we're not making a hundred percent living out of that. We're not touring full time with you. So we actually had this visa where, uh, the, the USA has this visa that's for sports people in, in the amateur, like it's amateur sports. Right. So you're actually doing it professional. You're good at it, but you're making not enough money to actually just live 100% out of that. So we got like actually a sports visa because that was the only criteria. Which that fit, we, that kind of fit, didn't even fit, yeah, but, but it worked. Fit. Yeah. And the thing is, if you don't get the visa, if you apply for a visa, and that's, that's all over the world. Uh, the U.S. has like this rule. If you apply for a visa and you get denied, you're not allowed to enter the United States uh, for seven years. That is harsh. <laughs> not even as a tourist. Right. Not even as a tourist. And, and we were like, okay, fuck, if we don't get the visa, we're not going to play any of your tours in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, luckily it, had, it, it, it worked out. But then we had this situation where we played this festival uh, in Montebello in Canada where we got over the border. And I don't know if you remember, but that, that, that um, border patrol guy from the U.S., he told us, he never saw that visa before. So he kind of told us, dude, you just did a sticker in your passport and just call it visa or what? And and I was like, yeah, but your government sold us that thing and it was not cheap. So it's like, 
it's all we have. And we sat on, on that on that little bench because you, you, you were allowed to go through and then you just walk through because you had to. Mm-hmm. But like the three Swiss guys were sitting on a bench in front of that 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 cell, like yeah. out of the movies. And I was always looking at that cell and I was like, <laughs> I mean, how cool would it be? But like how <laughs> fucked up, you know, it's like we wouldn't play the tour. <laughs> yeah, that would be. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so it's so stressful, man. It it is like tr- doing what you want to do is stressful. I don't know why. It's like if you do what everybody else wants you to do, no problem. But if you do what you want to do, which is tour and play show, like who, what's wrong with that? Yeah, it's just it's just like I mean, I get that probably a lot of times they actually find stuff in a touring party which are illegal or whatever. If it's drugs or or you just committed a crime, so whatever. I mean, right. we just, just we just still normal people. But the thing is, like when we when we came to you um, to record the record to Seattle, um, my sister came with us, and um, me and my sister were just going through the, the passport uh, control, and were um, in in uh, Seattle. We were at the the luggage uh, belts, yeah. and and Tristan and Silvio wouldn't show up there. So I called them and they the phone was off. Mm-hmm. It was complete mailbox directly. I was like, dude, that's strange. So we waited there for over an hour and we asked the person like, hey, uh, our friends are still up there. And she says, yeah, but these are uh, the, their suitcases. And she was like, yeah, they're probably going to be picked up because they have to. They probably have to fly home. And I, like, and I was like, but why is that? You know, like nobody could say anything. And then after like one and a half hours, Tristan and Sylvia came out of, 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 of the officer's bureau and they got separated and they just, they just checked them. I mean, it was, Sylvia was like, dude, it was nothing, nothing wrong about their questions and stuff. They just checked us. Yeah. It just, it took, just takes like, a while. They had tattoos and whatever. And, you know, Sylvia with the beard. Um, I would probably check Sylvia too. So. Yeah. I'd check Sylvia. <laughs> <laughs> He looks like he's in Anthrax. His favorite band is Anthrax, still, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's 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 a lot into soul and and jazz and and hip hop at the moment. Oh, actually. that's good. Then, but, of course, I mean, yeah. not like Blue and Anthrax is still in his heart. Yeah, yeah, of course, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean that you you brought up that you know that Hawaiian trip, man. That just reminds me of one that was so much fun to to just be in Hawaii with uh, all you guys. I remember you guys because there's a. I did a video, a best life video on my YouTube a while back, and it's you guys are in it. You're you're riding little mopeds or little yep. scooters, and then uh, Tristan and I go to the beach. I lose my ring in the ocean. Yeah, and and Tristan gets some goggles and finds it, and it was on this rock. Like it's just in an, an impossible feat. Yeah. You, you know, just he just told it that story that he just told you, and he just shouted at you, just stay where you are. Yes, yeah, stay right there, right where like, you lost it. Yeah, yeah, and he went and got some goggles. And and the cool thing is, is I I had a camera. It was an underwater, you know, filter on my. I think it was a GoPro or something like that. And I had it looking around. You know, of course, I can't see what I'm filming. But later yeah. on in the footage, and it's in the video, you see the ring, and there's an arrow pointing at. And I put an arrow pointing at the ring. It's like so wild. Yeah. That he found that. So, yeah, that was a cool trip. I love – yeah, I love Hawaii. So much fun. But getting yeah. to, one, go and play a show in Hawaii and then have, like, a little vacation, that's – it doesn't get better was, than that. We got, Sylvia and I just separated from you guys because I wanted to show Silvio the snorkel place I was when I was there with, 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 with Silvio. Yeah. And um, I was like, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but, I mean – Come with me to the snorkel place. I mean, it's just it's just beautiful. And then we then we we rented those um, motorbikes, these small mopeds, and it was so fun because we we just drove that one street actually around the island. Yeah. And at some point it got dark, and we just got back, and we kind of got lost a little bit. And I remember like one of the most coolest things was we didn't know where we actually were, and then we just like came over a little hill. It was dark, and you just see like the whole hawaiian downtown uh like from up a hill yeah that was like a moment where you like it looks like a movie <laughs> and we were just standing there like 
that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I love that. That that's like I'm always looking for those vantage points. Well, yeah. is there is there anything you want to want to add? This has been so much fun, man. Like um I know you got the new record coming out very soon, end of the month, next month, February. Um this will come out right before that. But uh unless you want me to hold it no, okay. that's fine. No, I have like I had I did this 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 talk, these talks with Sebi from Itchy, mm -hmm. uh, JC from Doggy Dog, and Chris Rowe. And so whenever you're ready, um, I just thought that's why I asked you because I just wanted to make the pre-order time a little bit more interesting for people, you know, and com and connect it because like our PR guy for Germany, he he was like Joel, you played with so many bands. And and Mike is like the most special one because it was not just a playing with his band; it was playing as his band. Mm -hmm. and, and so many people just don't know anything about these stories. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like they they don't make the connection, and and that's why I was asking the four most important people to me I toured with just to talk about these times. And yeah. uh, with Baby from Itchy, for example, it was just like because it was our first international tour; they took us with. And, 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 and it's a friendship since then, you know? So it was so cool. And I, I posted that today and people's reactions are so cool because they're like, oh, I didn't know you, you are actually friends. <laughs> it's like, that's crazy. I mean, so yeah. Yeah, I love it. That's great. I, I love seeing that stuff. So uh, you've always been a great guy. You, you definitely a big part of my life. So thank you so much. Can't wait to hear the new record. Um, you're a great songwriter, man. I mean, just, Thanks, just keep keep it rolling. I will, and you too. And, and it, I'm so good. What you are doing, like the, the thing that, what makes me most proud when when Tom Chichilla told me last time that like we are like a big part of that MX Peaks is still going on, you know. Mm -hmm. And like, there's a big difference between just going on and 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 what are you, what you guys are doing. It's just insane because like as you see. That's just that's like the collection up here. It's just like the main albums I I got here. But I'm like a collector for bands I do love, and that's like the Ataris, MXPX, and some others. And so it's fun because just something to collect from your band again. You know, it's like it's really cool. Stuff's coming out. It's like unpredictable, and you're like, what a new song is out, and then you're like happy just to listen to that song. And you just listening. So I have to give it back to you. Um, big part of my life even before we met and um yes they are so perfect dude thank you so how can people how can people pre-order the record i know they can't maybe this second but uh what's it's, the situation where where do they go where do they find you they actually go to my merch arsenal <laughs> yeah merch arsenal europe yeah it's merch arsenal minus europe.com and there's slim boy on it and it says yeah you'll, you'll find it it's really easy uh, to get there, or you just go to slimboy.ch uh, for Switzerland. And yeah, so it's easy to find. And um, yeah, we had a lot of pre orders today. It was really, really cool. Awesome. And, and, the, and the good thing is, like, because we never had like a fan base in Switzerland, which was, how do you say that? Because we started to tour internationally really early. Mm -hmm. It's so cool to see where these orders come from. I mean, you you know that. But having like an order from Japan, it's just or yeah. order from the States, it's yeah. just to me that's like something I, I'll just get this order and I'm like, how cool that a guy in Los Angeles is receiving a vinyl and spins your vinyl in Los Angeles. It's like perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. So go get it, everybody. You can pre order now. Um Dude, I wish you the best. Can't wait for it. I, I'm the same way. When when you put out a new song, when Slim Boy puts out a new song, because you know some of these songs are my favorites, I always check it out. So you guys have a new. Uh, there's a new single out right now, and go get the the full length. Perfect. All right, Joel. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> have a good Bye. night. I'll have a good day. <laughs> yes. Good night. <laughs> All right, Joel Batter, everybody. Bye.